coming. I'm um, Yuko Miyamoto, and I am right across the way, and I teach in the biology department. And so um, Ray had asked to, do I need to use the microphone? Is it, I'm loud enough? What? Oh, so I need to speak, okay. All right, so um, Ray had asked me to come and talk, and I was really surprised. I'm like, what do you want me to say? I, I never, you know, thought about being a speaker, but okay. I am much more comfortable talking about material, you know, talking about the science and things like that. So talking about me was kind of really out of my comfort zone. And being um, Japanese, you also don't talk about yourself. You use the passive language, even with my parents. They, you don't say I. The community in Japan is very homogeneous. So right there, I'm like, well, you want me to talk about myself for 10 minutes? Okay, I could do this. So um, I had to think about what do I want to share with you? So I had to make sure that I stayed focused um, in the 10 minutes. So I'm going to use my notes. So I wanted to kind of share with you a few experiences in my life that may be unique for being Asian. So one of the things that had come up um, was I would get asked the question, where are you from? And so I was like, okay, well, what do you mean? So um, I asked my spouse, he said, how often do people approach you to ask you, like, where are you from? He's like, well, what do you mean? Why? Well, you're always talking to strangers, so I don't know why would they ask you that. And I said, well, like at Target or, you know, at the DMV or like at Dick's Sporting Goods when you're waiting to check out, you know, it takes so long. <laughs> and then he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, they asked me, you know, where are you from? And so the conversation would go something like this. So <clears throat> people would say, where are you from? I'll say, I'm from California. No, no, where are you from? Oh, I, I grew up in Torrance like outside of, Los, in a suburb in Los Angeles where, is, where Ray happens to also be from Torrance. So I'm like, oh, this is so random. Like, how is it that you meet people? And then so the um, person would ask, no, where are your parents? No, they're in Torrance too. Um, <laughs> they live in California. It's 15 minutes from the Los Angeles airport. It's 15 minutes from the beach. Um, no, like before California. Oh, well, they're from Hiroshima, Japan. Is that what you mean? They're like, oh, so you're Japanese. I said, yeah, I am Japanese. So, and then sometimes, um, more, more, not recent times, but sometimes they'll say, well, you don't have an accent. And I said, well, California people often don't have an accent. And I'm not from North Carolina, so I don't have an accent. And then I said, well, but I shouldn't have an accent because I had been brought up in California when I was, since I was two. So it's a good thing that I don't have an accent. So, um, so this question of where are you from really came up after college. Growing up in California, I had grown up in a, very com uh, a community that was very heterogeneous. I went to the LA City School District, that's the second largest in the nation. My um, high school had all kinds of people. And if you were white, you were probably in the minority, less than 5%. So for my experience in my community, um, it was very uncommon to be a minority, so I didn't really know what that would feel like. And so then when I had to choose after um, deciding to go to college because it was sort of not a choice. It was like, when you go to college, when you go to college with my parents who are um, high school educated. So you, I knew I had to go to college. There was no like, what else would you do? You just have to go to college. So I had um, gone to community college where still in my community, very mixed race there. And so I needed to push myself out of the comfort zone. So I had applied as a transfer student to go to either UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, or UC Davis. And I purposely chose, I got into those schools, and I chose UC Santa Barbara because in my mind, I thought that would be the place that I would encounter the most white people. Because that was not my experience. But the rest of the United States is predominantly white. Well, how am I going to fit in? Will I be comfortable? I've been very lucky to be living in a community that is very diverse. So, um, and I thought that this might be something that I made up. So I just checked last night. 
there was an LA Times article published in 2015 that said, UC Santa Barbara, overwhelmingly white, not anymore. So it was a real thing, like when I had chosen to go to Santa Barbara, that I would hopefully get a different experience. So when I went to Santa Barbara, it wasn't so much that I felt like I was an Asian, because in California, I think it's, um, I think from my perspective, pretty accepted that you have different communities of people and people are used to seeing everybody. So it wasn't a question. I didn't feel Asian. I did feel like, oh, I'm a transfer student. Oh, I'm a first generation. Like, how do I negotiate this? You're in a um, school of 23,000 students, predominantly riding bicycles, which was horrifying because I'm not very good on the bicycle and there's like little highways. So that alone was very stressful to kind of negotiate. And then everyone, they, they, their bikes get taken. Have you had that experience, Ray? Did your bike get stolen? Yeah, so I had about, I had two. So this is sort of the thing. So, um, and so my experience at Santa Barbara, it was not so much, oh, well now I get to, I understand, or how does it feel? So I still didn't really um, feel like an Asian person, necessarily. I had chosen a science major. My major was in pharmacology. I picked um, Santa Barbara not only for the population of the student, but yes, it was by the beach, and then they had this major that I was going to be able to do something with. So when I decided after college um, I wasn't going to go straight to graduate school, I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do. So I think I tell my students that growing up in Southern California, you don't have four seasons. So I read about these four seasons. I don't know what this four season thing is. Why is it such a big deal? Oh, fall is so beautiful, people would say. So I'm like, well, maybe I should just leave and move to the East Coast, experience what this four season is like. So I moved, got an internship, um, and went to the King of Prussia. And then I was there for a summer, and I then moved to New York, Delaware. So when you're in Delaware, that's when I really felt like, oh, this is what it feels like to be a minority. You get to be the one. And I was like, this is kind of a weird feeling. I really then felt like either because I felt insecure because I was in this new environment, or really was I the only Asian person people had encountered. But I didn't know. So I um, was very happy to spend time in Delaware because I had experienced the best fried chicken in a cash only hole in the wall place. I discovered Philadelphia cheesesteak sandwiches, the sub sandwich at a place called Capriati's, which was delicious, and so, and rice pudding. Like these are things of growing up in California, yes, you get fried chicken, these are all wonderful things, but you still get these unique experiences living somewhere else. And yes, the Four Seasons were wonderful. Um, the icy winters, not so great. I didn't like the threat of, if I go drive down and have to buy milk, I could potentially skid out and die on the black ice. That was not for me. So I realized I need to move away first um, to get a different experience. So throughout my time at Delaware, I reflected upon like, how did I feel in that space? How did I feel when I was the one person? How did I feel when a person at TGI Friday said, I am having a really hard time looking at you because he had been a Vietnam War vet. And so he was looking at me, it had been 25 years past, and I said, well, I'm really sorry um, you're feeling that way, so I think I'm gonna move away. So you just kind of go away. So that was sort of my first experience of really feeling like, Oh, I'm that person. And um, since then, I had decided um, after Delaware, I was going to go to graduate school and then move to Texas because there's no winter there. It's super hot and humid. So again, I made this change. Um, and at that point, I'm in a community of other science people. In the science community, being Asian is not a minority. So I go from this environment where I felt like a minority back into an environment where you're not the minority, and it doesn't even benefit me to be um, an Asian woman in science because there's plenty of that um, the type of person. <clears throat> so when I had decided to come 
um, after graduate school in Houston, I came to University of North Carolina to do my postdoctoral research, and after that, I ended up coming to Elon. So I still think about um, being Asian, but how have I connected with the community? There still isn't that many people who look like me. Um, maybe this is not the most PC, but now there's another faculty member in the biology department who's also Asian, and so sometimes we joke and say, well, you know, at graduation, maybe if you just sat in the crowd, then we can switch halfway through. Nobody would really notice. <laughs> and so, so we kind of joke about that, because graduation can be kind of long in, in these unbreathable gowns. But, you know, we joke about it because, you know, we can. You kind of know that you are, like, you know, less than five people on campus. But, you know, from my experience at Elon, I have to say the community that I connect with may be people who may not be in the majority. But for me, I've been able to negotiate. Like, I just find people really interesting. There are connections to all kinds of, especially with food. That's really, like, an easy way to connect. But, you know, you can find common ground. And so for me, I've been able to... Um, figure out like, oh, what do I have in common with individuals? What can we share? And so even though I might still be one or two, my discomfort has been decreased over time because of my awareness and just really being realistic. Like, it's okay to be the one. And so to be um, Asian American Sometimes it does feel like you're treading in two different spaces. You still, I still have to be the Japanese person, but then also be American, because that's just what I am. But the benefit from that is um, you get to kind of learn different things. One of the greatest things I love is that my Thanksgiving at my parents' house will include all the traditional stuff. And then, because the parents and the aunts and uncles still want the food that they like, you get a whole spread of the Japanese food. So if you come to my Thanksgiving in my parents' house in Torrance, this is a kind of layout that you would get. So in some ways, being on straddling two roles, potentially, in terms of ethnicity, can be a great benefit. So if you, choose, uh, if you come across me and you want to ask, where are you from, I have different answers. If you want to know my family history, I'll say, well, my grandparents were from Hawaii, and yes, they were in the internment camp, and you know, my parents, um, they don't speak fluent English, but they live in Torrance, California. Um, if you ask me where I'm from academically, I'll say, well, I got my bachelor's in pharmacology, I got my PhD at Texas and postdoc at UNC, and then I teach in the biology department at Elon. So depending on what answer you might be looking for, I can talk about many things. And so I wanted to share my experience of, if you ask someone where you're from, just ask them if you really want to know what the question is, rather than, no, no, like, no, where are you from? Really, where are you from? <laughs> no, that's where I live. So that's my story. So thank you for your time.